as fans were hoping for, the recent Gran Turismo 7 state of play was fairly packed with content, but as a result of that, not all of it could be in the spotlight and a lot of it went under the radar. So here's a rundown of some of the things you might have missed from the Gran Turismo 7 state of play. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is Gran Turismo Cafe, which will be found at the centre of the new world map. And I'm here to clarify that GT Cafe is the campaign mode of GT7, in which you'll be collecting cars of different types and completing driving challenges and the so-called menu books in order to level up and progress through the game. There will be 30 menu books in total to complete, each comprising of three cars each, so that's 90 cars in total, so you're not going to be expected to collect every single car in the game to complete the campaign, but collecting ones of each type is going to be important to complete those menu books. And while completing those will mark the end of the campaign, Kaz envisions that will not be the end of your time with GT7, as you collect the rest of the 400 plus cars, complete the license test, and engage in sport mode. But when you are working through the campaign, you're going to have to race against the AI, commonly considered a weak point of the previous game GT Sport, and potentially the whole Gran Turismo franchise. But for GT7, Kaz insists that the AI are improved and will be much more aggressive in defending their lines, as well as just generally being faster and, when they make errors, doing so in a more human way. And also for the first time in a Gran Turismo campaign mode, there will be three different settings for the AI, not just in arcade races like previously. We will have beginner, intermediate and advanced. The reformer of those intended to be more inclusive for new players, much like the new music rally feature. But for veteran players, it's imagined that they will jump straight into the professional setting. During the state of play, we saw both the dynamic time changes and the weather effects with a drying line over time and puddles forming in the appropriate places. Although it must be said that weather is not going to be available for all tracks, but every single one of GT7's 34 locations from launch will have a full day to dusk cycle, which will still affect car performance based on temperature, humidity and air pressure. However, some of the world's most famous circuits like the Nürburgring, Spa-Francorchamps and Daytona will have a full 24-hour cycle with weather effects too. But while we're speaking about circuits, we already know that Gran Turismo 7 will feature 34 different locations and 97 different track layouts from launch. More will be added with updates as well as new cars over time, but of those 34 locations we know every single one. Yet of the individual track layouts, four are as yet unconfirmed. So we do have to wonder what they might be. There are a lot of potential options from reverse layouts of the new Trial Mountain and Deep Forest to the 2020 spec layout of Daytona with the NASCAR chicane, two new north layouts of the Tokyo Expressway, all being strong chances, and potentially any multiple of those could be right, and subsequently find themselves in GT7 from launch. And now it's time to talk cars. As I mentioned earlier, tracks and cars will be added in updates over the course of GT7's life, likely for free as they were for GT Sport. And we have an idea of what some of those cars may be, as there are some cars that are being touted and scanned for the franchise that are yet to appear. But aside from those cars, Kaz has expressed an intent to add more of a particular type of car into GT7. Shoot boxes. Well, 
Kaz says entry level cars, which I think is perhaps a little more fair because truth be told, I do love them. But to quote Kaz himself from an interview, well, the translation goes something like this. In GT7, we have prepared a wide range of cars, but I don't think it is enough. For example, I think it's necessary to increase the number of entry level cars. And then he refers to the extensive tuning that's going to be available in Gran Turismo 7 and the video in the state of play where we saw a monster of a Volkswagen Beetle that had been engine swapped to have the 3.8 litre unit from a Porsche 911 GT3. And speaking of tuning. Yes, as I just mentioned, engine swaps were fairly well known from the state of play, despite them going under the radar themselves. That's the type of thing you are going to notice. But there are a few other upgrades that we see for a brief second in the tuning menu that we've never had in Gran Turismo before and are very, very interesting as potentially part of the extreme section of the upgrades shop. Now, admittedly, this probably won't be available to all cars, but at least for some, like this Beetle that we see, we're going to be able to add things like anti-lag, four-wheel steering, custom handbrakes, as well as once again having the ability to add ballast to our car to potentially affect the weight distribution and therefore the handling, something which I imagine will be very important with that Beetle that we saw. And for our final point, our custom creations may get a bit more use than perhaps we were expecting going by the precedent of Gran Turismo Sport, because thanks to the new performance point system, which has been heavily revised after being absent in Gran Turismo Sport, it seems as though for at least some daily races we're going to have the ability to use our own garage cars and have a much more varied grid, provided our car meets the PP requirement of the race. So, there we have it, some things that you might have missed from the Gran Turismo 7 state of play. We're now of course less than a month out from the game's release, thankfully it has not been delayed again, and the signs are currently looking pretty damn good. This could be the best Gran Turismo game in a long, long time. Let me know what you think in the comments, and of course, be sure to stick around on the channel for all the latest updates. As I said, we're not far away from release now, so information is going to be continuing to come until day one and then after when the updates start rolling in. So, all aboard the hype train, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.